Thank you very much for being here. It's a, it's a great pleasure to have you uh, invited in this, uh, this um, conversation, one can say, between colleagues. Um, and I hope we're going to have a time to discuss a little bit about what's happening into Northern Macedonia at the moment. And I hope we're going to have a good time and enjoy. Um, well, thank you. Uh, it's really nice to see you in person. And uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, I hope these kinds of conversations will uh, get traction and uh, will gain popularity over time. This is really good what you're doing. And I think that it will really serve all the professionals of our type. I think to, you know, get informed about the regional circumstances. Yes. I think what, what's important about these initiatives is that they're spontaneous. Like they're led by directly us, which are like the professionals in the area. So we don't have any, let's say, EU interparty yes. making sure that we have these sort of meetings and this sort of data. So it's all between us, right? Because ultimately we live in this common home, which is the Balkans. And obviously it is our heritage and it belongs to us to take care of it. So. Uh, I think, um, if I may make a little introduction about yourself, you finished your um, LLB at the Faculty of Law at the University of Skopje, your LLM at Faculty of Law at Belgrade, and you're currently pursuing your PhD uh, thesis, uh, you're a PhD candidate at the, for international law and politics at the Faculty of Law at San Clemente Horizic University in Bitola, currently a research assistant in the area of EU law, and human rights in one of the oldest research institutes in Northern Macedonia, the Institute for Sociological, Political and Judicial Research and at St. Cyril, right? Did I get that right? Yes. St. Cyril yes. Methodius University in Skopje. It's a great privilege to have you here, 12 years as a researcher. Um, she has written a lot of international uh, research publications, but in particularly her monographic work and I hope you'll have a chance to share a little bit insight into that. Uh, how can we get access to it? And because that those sorts of works from... Uh, consociational. Consociational <laughs> democracy, yes. How to get from consociational democracy, democracy to... How to yes. get from consociational democracy to a, a majority, majority democracy. democracy. And I think yes. this, this sort of topic pretty much can sum up very well, not just Northern Macedonia, but I guess... Western Balkan problem and as a whole in many regards. And uh, you can share a little bit insight about your work here. I think it would be very fascinating. Just a little bit inside, what are some key facts we can have about it? Um, you're also working in one of your projects called the European Social Survey. You're an active participant in many uh, civil processes, NGOs, public expert debates. Um, involved in many EU policies and EU draft legislation reports. So it's a great privilege to have you here and uh, I hope we'll have a very interesting discussion. So tell us a little bit, what is this European Social Survey project you're working on? Uh, yes, well, uh, this is a large project. I have just an auxiliary role there. However, it is a great uh, undertaking. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, this is... Um, uh, this is uh, an empirical um, survey which, um, uh, which involves almost all countries of the not only European Union but Europe as a continent. Mm -hmm. It is also a longitudinal uh, survey, so you can compare uh, data from uh, it uh, from uh, every couple of years. Uh, it examines a lot of social uh, social topics uh, such as. Uh, health, education, criminal justice, etc. So everything you can imagine, it, it's in the uh, survey. And uh, I'm, I feel really privileged to be part of the team in my country to be realizing this. Uh, my institute, the Institute for Sociological and Political and Juridical Research does this. It was really hard to get it and really hard to realize it. So. Um, I would recommend uh, anyone who, who is not familiarized with this to, mm -hmm. to open the site and to see how, many, how much data is there, comparable mm -hmm. data about all the countries, uh, which is of essential uh, meaning for uh, the policymakers right. so that we can create policies, so that we can make uh, data-based data policies. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
how, how difficult is this transition to a majority democracy? I, I think um, you're, you're, the kind of, you're that kind of scholar which has that very well blend into the EU law and the jurisprudential aspect of the field, but also um, being a public law expert, you also have a very good grasp in the policies and how they affect the everyday life of citizens. And um, tell us a little bit, what are some of the key, key concepts of your work and where can, we, where can we get access to it? Uh, well, actually, this was a work yeah, I from think, uh, several years ago. Yeah. Now, currently, my work is... If you're uh, working more, a new work, new project, yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, currently, I'm more into the into the cohesion policy and the regional development policy in my country, the cohesion policy of the EU, of course, right. uh, and uh, some other policies of EU and uh, the Republic of North Macedonia. Uh, so... Uh, this um, uh, the transition from uh, consociational towards majority democracy is something that I would like to set aside now, because mm -hmm. it's not the uh, the primary topic of the uh, of the EU integration at the moment, since um, uh, this is something that we need to do. We introduce consociational democracy to uh, balance a lot of previous injustices right. uh, in terms of. Uh, of ethnic uh, disproportions right. uh, in the country, uh, but um, over the time, the mm -hmm. consociational democracy has uh, delivered certain results right. and has outlived itself. So mm -hmm. now at the point, we do not have the need to implore this uh, concept, mm -hmm. but we need to engage into majority democracy because the consociational democracy is draining our public resources and right. doesn't serve anymore a purpose, you know, because mm -hmm. the point was to integrate uh, a lot of ethnicities. Now mm -hmm. that has been done. So uh, the majority democracy and the civil society is something that we should aspire to. At I, the do, moment. So do you think like the Ohrid agreement, um, that sort of, uh, let's say, building block of modern uh, Macedonian state. Do you yes. think it's time for perhaps for a revision of it or moving beyond it? Moving beyond it. it um, a lot of people had uh, uh, took issue with that mm -hmm. when it happened, yeah. Yeah. but it really served the purpose. Right. It, it is ingrained in our constitutional being as a country. It mm -hmm. served the purpose. It was beneficial at the moment. It uh, produced many, uh, many results that we wish to Mm -hmm. to have as a society, even though some people were not aware that this is something that, uh, that we should strive to. Mm -hmm. uh, this was achieved. And today, since it right. has outlived itself, yes. today yeah. is, is time for something new. But mm -hmm. it was beneficial at the time being. So mm -hmm. yes, I would say that. Mm -hmm. um, the, the current, I mean, Albania... I'm sorry, just to say, it is really interesting that you know about the Ohrid Agreement, since yeah, of course. Know, I mean, <laughs> it's something more internal. <laughs> yes. um, the, currently, Albania and North Macedonia, they are in the process to join the EU, right? They're at the, at the, at the door. However, current uh, political turmoil, particularly what's happening between Northern Macedonia and, and Bulgaria, have sort of kept this trend at bay. Now, um, as, a, as a human rights expert and a rule of law expert, right, are, are, there, are there any basis for such, um, so what, what, what's happening between Bulgaria and Northern Macedonia? Like, do, does, that, does this conflict is based on some, um, does, does it have legal impact? Like, could, could it, are, are there, for example, uh, um, citizenship um, quarrels or are there, um, how, how would that, affect the journey later on? Uh, this is a really interesting question. Uh, it requires probably... So are there, are, there, are there human rights issues? Like, because you're a human rights advocate in many respects in the... In, uh... Well, uh, of course there are human rights issues. Uh, there always are <laughs> human exactly. rights issues when uh, two countries uh, have some kind of dispute or unresolved issues, of course. Um, 
first and foremost, our uh, our process has been prolonged since, uh, mm -hmm. it, as you know, uh, we have been the first country to sign the stabilization and association, association agreement. Good, right. Yes, in 2001, it entered into force 2004. And just remember, we were the first country uh, along with Croatia to uh, be granted uh, the, the candidate status. Right. And today um, we have the most prolonged process due to these kinds of circumstances. Mm -hmm. Of course, there were internal circumstances as well, but this um, this situation with Greece and with Bulgaria, th these are uh, directly impacting the the dynamics of the mm -hmm. of the process and our inability to start this higher higher level of negotiation mm -hmm. uh what uh, has happened with, with bulgaria uh some would say was um, it took us by surprise uh some would say it was really expected uh mm -hmm. anyhow um anyhow i would say that um there were um uh, Bulgaria is not an isolated case. Right. Bulgaria has uh, uh, has made some really unprincipled uh, mm -hmm. unprincipled uh, claims, mm -hmm. uh, which are not uh, based uh, both in history and it is also not the European way to dispute to dispute uh, someone's identity or national feeling and or someone's language, etc. So the, um, if uh, if all these claims, if all these uh, bilateral disputes arise in the European Union, it wouldn't exist. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. The, uh, yes, the, this mm -hmm. should be left aside. This mm -hmm. has been done with uh, Slovenia, with Croatia. They all left aside their bilateral uh, yes, issues, uh, yeah. issues, and they entered the European Union as a as a, a community of something greater, of a community of values. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the Bulgarian claims are not European, are not in line with the international law, uh, not only Euskogans, but also the European law, etc. Mm -hmm. And uh, this has been also proven by many uh, uh, rulings by the European Court of uh, Human Rights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, Bulgaria hasn't abided uh, uh, to this. Uh, anyhow, yep. uh, anyhow, uh, anyhow, Bulgaria. So it's a strictly uh, political yeah. process. It isn't really it doesn't have anything to do with process. the EU in in itself as a. Well. It's yes. more like a. It's more like a yes. political hinge which they keep Bulgaria. Which they keep uh, uh, northern Macedonia, right? So it's part of that political yes, but, process. But we, can, but we cannot know what uh, what the the background is entirely, because, for mm -hmm. instance, some would say that Bulgaria is as is isolated uh, in this process since uh, it has suffered. You know that uh, funds have been uh, restrained from Bulgaria because of this from the mm -hmm. EU. Mm -hmm. uh, also, it has been reprimanded by great European leaders, especially by by Germany and such. So uh, some would say that Bulgaria suffers because of this, but others would say that uh, that Bulgaria cannot act unilaterally. That someone stands be be behind the behind this, mm -hmm. because um, you know if there was such a political will to yeah. start the negotiations with Macedonia, uh, some kind of pressure would have been put on to, Bulgaria to. to Yes, to complete. So, uh, and Bulgaria mm -hmm. doesn't have the the power or the political position Greece had, for instance. It we were very well aware what the political position of Greece is, not just in EU but in the world. So, it was more natural to engage into some kind of political discourse. But Bulgaria does not have this mm -hmm. uh, th this position, and and the claims are rather drastic. <laughs> so, right. Right. Uh, you know, um, uh, this is uh, something to uh, but, to consider. Also, mm -hmm. also, I would like to say that all these bilateral issues should be put aside not only because we want to enter the union, but because when uh, when we enter the the union or we uh, we achieve a certain level of integration, mm -hmm. uh, a great space will open up for cross-border cooperation for yeah. projects of any kind infrastructural mm -hmm. educational etc right. both bulgaria and macedonia would benefit from this you know yeah. uh, it's like this in the whole region if we cooperate <laughs> then great deal of projects would be realized mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and 
we would all gain from this yeah you know so now now putting the political process aside um in terms of yes. legal preparation how well has northern macedonia like uh, approximated its eu legislation um with the aki how, how prepared is the aki uh, how prepared is macedonians themselves for 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 these negotiations because i mean this was a, a talk we were having in albania and it, it's going to be difficult when you start o- when you start to open the chapters and the actual implementation begins, it's an, it's an entirely new field for, for most mm-hmm. for most of the citizens. And I think here experts like yourself can play a very important role, not only to bridge the legislation gap that exists, but also um, make the law um, acceptable to the ordinary citizens, because essentially we're taking foreign law and implementing it into our own domestic system. So. Um, since you rightly said that it has already begun. It was the first country to start the, the ascension mm-hmm. process. And how, how well has, has that process gone? How well is that implementation stage been going so far? Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, this is extremely important mm-hmm. <laughs> question. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we're I mean, all... I mean, just your thoughts, same. really. Yeah, yes. just your thoughts. Uh, what are some... Well, uh, it's not the thoughts so much as the factual... Exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, situation uh, well uh, we we have transposed a great deal of the EU uh, legislation mm-hmm. into our law um, into our legislature into the internal uh, legal system and we have done this for many years now uh, we have been doing this for many years especially at the beginning when there was a great uh, enthusiasm yeah. about this and uh, we are constantly doing this so i think we have um, we have good progress in this we have uh, internalized a great deal of the european law especially in terms of human rights mm-hmm. uh, there isn't uh, and much more to do here we mm-hmm. have the 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 law However, uh, the problem is more on the implementation side. Yes. You know, I, I had with Dushan the same conversation, and he will also point out that, well, it's, it's, it's okay we implement all these laws, but then let's build the bylaws to implement it there in the actual terrain. I mean, yes. we're having a lot of problems, he was saying, like to, to create the, the bylaws to implement it. So I think this is the common challenge we face. Yes, but not only the bylaws, the bylaws can be also uh, created, you know, uh, mm-hmm. it's uh, how the institutions implement, how they practice the law, mm-hmm. how they apply the, the, the law. These rules, because right. the rules are good. We have always had a decent legislature, even before the, the European process. Um, we, uh, we have, this is some legacy of the previous system. We have quality nomotechnics. Uh, there is not much problem in um, in adjusting to new to new circumstances. Of course, we are facing deficiencies in the law uh, from any kind. You know, like yeah, legal holes, as yeah. we say, or con- yeah. contradictory uh, laws, or sometimes even you know when um, we are not sure what is the lex specialis in in the particular case. A uh, certain institution uh, is governed by a certain lex specialis, and then the other institution claims it's another. So mm-hmm. uh, you know we are experiencing all kinds of difficulties with the law, uh, but uh, all these are secondary. I would say that the prevailing feature of the of our legislature, both as internal legislature and as accommodated to the European one, is the feature of quality. I would say this mm-hmm. uh, as a personal opinion. So yeah, yeah. some might some might disagree. I'm also not proponent of the people who always criticize everything or always say that everything is good. Uh, I stand somewhere in between. Right. So I would say that the legislature is pretty much. Uh, of good quality, mm-hmm. the implementation is a more problematic part. What is happening with the European um, legislature in Macedonia, not uh, as regulations and directives that are transposed, this is not so problematic, but uh, you know, a Macedonian legal system, unlike the USA's or UK's case law, mm-hmm. where the precedents are the, the basic source of the 
of the law, uh, the Macedonian legal system is a typical continental uh, legal system where the written laws are the basic source. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course, it has nothing is a, in a, uh, its pure form. We have uh, we have also to abide uh, some uh, uh, judges' practice, yeah. uh, some course practice. So these are yeah. mixed elements. Of mm -hmm. course, there is mm -hmm. hybrid elements, and we have also adopted that. Uh, that we must obey the uh, we must uh, obey the the rulings of the European Court, Court of Human Rights. Human yeah. Rights. Yeah. This is done really seldomly. So we mm. receive their rulings, but you know our judges do not use them uh -huh. uh, frequently. Also, our advocates do not use them. I'm sorry to say, but also the ones huh. that should be really um, ambitious in this term. Uh, emphasizing it yeah. doing so yes uh -huh. and uh, also we have problem with uh, with their implementation so uh, i guess we re we receive them and mm -hmm. uh, we do not exercise them enough even though this is a legal uh, it's an imperative norm for us to use them so uh, mm -hmm. the practice is uh, is mixed uh, serbia does this a lot more and has mm -hmm. does uh, and has done this for many years now we're mm -hmm. just at the, uh, at the beginning of the process. I don't know what it's like for Albania. Well, is I th this the same? I, th I think, um, I mean, in, in the entire Western Balkans, it was like this process of judicial maturity. I mean, we have the same issue, really. I mean, we have excellent laws implementing the latest EU key frameworks, yet how do you incorporate that into the way how the bureaucracy works and functions? Let's say a lot of EU uh, legislations on plastics and waste management framework. How do you how do you incorporate that into your own domestic system so that it functions as it should? Like the the waste stream hierarchy, for example, right? Things of that nature, right? So and that they they pretty much in its entirety they lack or they are there, but they don't know how to properly implement it. So I think it's a process of maturity that will come with time, yes. but. Um, but important is that that we are we keep this process of continuously reforming and reshaping and refining the judiciary system. And um, here in Albania, we've been engaged in this in this vicious fight in the judicial reform. Almost half of the Albanian judiciary uh, judges have been wiped out of the system because it turns out they had um, it's part of this vetting process, as we say it been uh, they they turned out to have these sort of um, unjustifiable sources of income and things of that nature so they were out so basically we have stockpiles of cases in the high court i mean in our own office we have like 10 15 cases in the high court they've been there like since 2016 uh, and then you know these things of that nature and i wanted to know like north macedonia like what 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 is the usual timeline of a court case there right so uh, do you have any idea or like or how is the, the the structure of the system really like do do you guys have a, a reform that has been going there how has that changed the shape of the judiciary has that made the justice more accessible in many regards in albania we know that's what's one of the main reasons why we do the reform to make justice more acceptable the people don't believe in the justice it's as simple as that they consider the justice the most corrupt area and same here <laughs> yeah yeah so i think a lot of has to do with image a lot of it has to do with functionality like i don't know yes. is there a strategy on judicial reform there or uh yes uh, well i would uh, like later on to come back to this vetting process mm. uh, but uh, it is a really interesting question uh, uh, but uh, first and foremost we have uh, we haven't had great changes in the structure of the of the mm -hmm. judicial system it's this pretty much uh, the same, the same as, uh, as it uh, has been, but we have been implement, implementing this uh, judicial reform uh, gradually during mm -hmm. the previous two decades, I think. So uh, we do not have this radical restructuring, but there are substantial uh, changes, of course, in every part of the system, in the, in the courts, in the public prosecutor's office, in, in every part of the system. Mm. Uh, generally, the system is uh, uh, three tier. We have uh, primary courts, uh, criminal and, um, and uh, civil, 
we have appellate courts, the highest, uh, the highest court of the country, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we have administrative and higher administrative court. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a separate, which is not practically court, but uh, it uh, it measures the legality uh, of the norms, is the constitutional court. Yeah. So pretty much but, the same. Uh, we, yes. We all, pretty much <laughs> yes. the same. But uh, the, the main courts are these ones, you know, mm -hmm. the primary, the appellate courts. Okay. Um, what is, uh, I don't know, we, we introduced the, the academy for, uh, for judges and public prosecutors, or in short, I would say the judicial academy. Mm -hmm. uh, a long time ago, I think it was 2006, like 15 years ago. Uh, and it has become part of the formal uh, preconditions for uh, you have to finish the, the, this academy so that you can become uh, someone in the judiciary. Mm -hmm. uh, and this has improved per, uh, the quality in the, uh, in the selection of uh, judges and public prosecutors. However, at the beginning, there was also great enthusiasm. This, uh, this was also done by the suggestion, not, but not suggestion, but mm -hmm. insisting on the European Union. Right. Uh, it was established uh, as a special body, uh, but over the time it has decreased its quality. And also there, are, uh, there is decreased quality in the selection of the uh, of the students, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. etc. Uh, anyhow, this is this is a good thing that it exists because it is uh, it is an additional uh, education educative process after the the legal mm -hmm. faculties. And mm -hmm. I have worked at a legal faculty for five years. I must say that it mm -hmm. is extremely important to invest into education. This is, these are the first steps in our competence as part uh, of the judiciary uh, further on in life. Yeah, uh, yeah, we yeah. have also problems with the primary and secondary education. You know, you cannot do wonders at the tertiary level when uh, people are uh, we, uh, when people lack uh, general knowledge from the first cycles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Indeed, so yeah. this has also decreased over the years. This is a problem. Anyhow, mm. after the, the faculty of law and some practice, uh, uh, then you can, you can um, go over the judicial academy. And uh, it is also good, uh, what is also uh, good about the judicial academy that it uh, provides not only quality, but uh, uh, you're pretty certain that after the, the, its completion, you will become a judge or a public prosecutor. There mm -hmm. is great deal of certainty th that this will happen. So mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. is good. Mm -hmm. uh, anyhow, the, the process of, uh, of impartiality, of accountability, yeah. of everything that should be a control mechanism in the judiciary, is mostly done by the separate body, the Judicial Council. Do you have this in Albania? We do have these recently set up bodies, like supervisory bodies, like check the quality uh -huh. of the judges, the prosecutors, yes. yeah, the High Prosecutorial yes. Council, the High, the High yes. Judicial Council. Yes, well, we have this Judicial Council. This is a separate independent body that mm. uh, is responsible for the selection or dismissal of judges. So there is no accountability if the, the Judicial Council doesn't work properly. We, we've had this for many years, but mm -hmm. it, has, uh, it, it has lived over some reforms. Uh, and you know, at first, we, ha we have had this body since the, the 1991. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's nothing new, but the changes have been, uh, have been new over time. You know, at the beginning, there was this great debate about whether it should be uh, consisted of professional judges, so that judges would uh, create this body, and uh, uh, it should be judges by judges, you know, mm -hmm. from the people and by the people. Well, but uh, <laughs> it doesn't work that yes. well here. Like it didn't. Here we tried a similar process. It didn't work because, well, they were colleagues, right? They were friends in many. Yes. <laughs> yes, and they weren't. Yeah, they weren't. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So they weren't very impartial. Yes. Exactly. This was part of the problem. On one hand, it is good to have professional body, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, you have this problem that you mentioned. And then over the time, you know, about everything, we have this great debate. <laughs> yeah. So over time, there was debate whether the, the uh, these uh, members of the council should be elected by the uh, assembly like it was before. Mm -hmm. uh, so now at the moment, we have a combined system where uh, I think eight, uh, eight members are uh, judges selected from the lines of the judges uh and by judges mm -hmm. and uh, another five are elected by the uh, assembly of the republic of north macedonia uh out of which two are uh proposed by the president and uh, this the whole body is 15 members two members are uh, ex officio the minister mm -hmm. of justice, justice and the president of the highest court but i think that these judges are the central part the of central the central of the, yeah. yes. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, um, this is extremely important uh, body for the for the accessibility of justice and for the accountability of the judges um and uh, you know uh there were some numbers that uh, i don't know something north from 700 appeals have been made about judges mis misconduct to wow. this body uh, wow. We can also, as citizens, not only uh, the judges or the formal institution, but uh, but uh, also we as citizens can make these applications for mm -hmm. uh, appeals for uh, judges' misconduct. And only four or six of them have been processed properly. So as you oh, can wow. see, yeah. this is also something that creates uh, distrust in the judiciary. Because yeah, pretty at much. a certain yeah. point, someone feels encouraged to to um to say okay this judge acted improperly and then nothing happens so mm -hmm. <laughs> as you can see yes uh and we come to the vetting process that you mentioned this yeah. is really interesting um we had great debates about this vetting process uh, the vetting is such a pejorative word yeah, yeah <laughs> i would yeah. like to circumvent it a bit but anyhow it was um uh, the vetting under very well thought out circumstances could have proved itself uh, as substantial step towards uh, quality of uh, and uh, towards quality of the judiciary. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is very hard to do, as you know. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Namely, there was the the you have to establish the principles upon which uh, vetting should take place. And this is a very sensitive issue. Then you have the problem with efficiency because mm -hmm. then the cases will pile on. By the way, we do not have that kind of problem with efficiency. We, we're we good with efficiency. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are not many piled up cases, but oh, they wow. could have been. Also, uh, we do not have so many prepared judges just standing on the, the lines waiting to enter. You know how the process goes. You have to, uh, to uh, admit someone in the judicial process to train someone mm -hmm. etc and uh, when you are faced with some kind of uh deep cut you cannot uh, just compensate that so easily so we have seen this from albania from serbia and uh, macedonia was very reluctant to to do the vetting process both because of this and from political reasons reasons course, obvious. because yeah. uh you know on the balkans a lot of people are interconnected mm -hmm. <laughs> in That's many true. ways That's both true. with the executive power and with other structures <laughs> with party people non-party people but also people with influence so as you know this is not not an easy thing to be done Mm -hmm. uh, some some experts said at the time when the the situation was the was the most terrible with the judiciary. Now it's not so much. We have, uh, according to the European Commission's report, we have some moderate progress. Last mm -hmm. year, even uh, we got the the evaluation that we had uh, good progress. Good progress, <laughs> yeah, which was very rare. Like it, it, it's yes, very, very rare, reluctant to do was... that. <laughs> Yes, uh, unlike our other neighbors, Albania, yeah. uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serbia, no one got this. Uh, this yes, I mean, this is the interesting part. Like North Macedonia is actually doing fairly better than the others in terms of. Yes, but this. but you know, uh, no, it's all very modest. Uh, we're all within the realm Ooh. of modesty. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we cannot make <laughs> a, a substantial qualitative leap forward. 
with mm. this kind of dynamics. Uh, That's true. So That's we true. can measure this or that, but we cannot do this, this unless we do something more. More. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a very good point, indeed. Yeah. Yes. So I, I had uh, a... that, that was it. Mm -hmm. okay. I had a friend from uh, Kicheva, like I did my school with him and uh, um, his parents, they used to work in, as, in the notary section. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to know like, um, how well are, let's, because I'm an Albanian, right? And, yeah, I have to make this question. How well are Albanians, like, let's say, incorporated in the judicial system there? Like, based, just based from your experience, it may be just your thought. I'm not, I'm sure you don't have any empirical data to, to assess this, but I mean, are they incorporated in the judicial system or better said, can I go in the court because they, they implemented this, um, the, the, the language law where Albanian became an official language like Macedonian. Uh, I don't know, is mm -hmm. that incorporated in the judicial system? Like, can I go, let's say a uh, Macedonian judge present its uh, hearings in Albanian before the court or something of that nature, like submit its, its, its files in Albanian or is that, not not applicable yet the the use of the of the language by the parties was never an issue we have always had the, these uh, rules even before the Ohrid, uh framework agreement uh, the parties could have applied to the courts in in any language mm -hmm. but the sessions are in Macedonian, um, for because the judges are Macedonian, all the, the documents are translated yes, afterwards. Yes, so, yes. you know, there is some mixed procedure. Anyhow, the there are there is this old guard, as we say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These are the uh, from the previous uh, system, the the judges and the public prosecutors withhold uh, higher levels of education and higher integrity. Mm -hmm. And then there are these new generations of Albanians, which are mu much more integrated because they're young, they know languages. Um, they also have traveled uh, much more so they can implement foreign, um, foreign experiences into our system. Mm -hmm. But also uh, this generation's problem is uh, a bit um, a lesser uh, competency overall. Yes. Overall, as, yes. Uh, yes, as the education uh, that have gained is on a, on lower mm -hmm. levels. So, you know, this is uh, not just for Albanians, but also for Macedonians and for other ethnicities. This mm -hmm. is uh, an, uh, an overarching issue. Yes. So, you know, uh, the, uh, this is a feature of the new generations. We, we have to work a bit more on the competences as well. Mm -hmm. starting from the primary education the, and, this is yes. something that we often forget in all these reports it's all about judiciary it's all about public prosecutors and advocacy etc but we uh, we must remember that the the level of literacy and the and the values and the capacity to to weigh the situations this is something that we learn in our prim primary school so mm -hmm. this is <laughs> this is indeed, really important indeed indeed uh, we don't emphasize this enough often. And uh, I yes. think across the Balkans, I think many of our problems can be resolved in this issue, like how we yes. concentrate our efforts to education. Indeed, yes. indeed. And, uh, also, the, uh, um, a lot of people are integrated, not just Albanians, but a lot of, um, I mean, we're multi-ethnic country. Multi-ethnic country. Uh, yes, uh, we, we're integrated also in terms of notaries public. Uh, there is a notary public for a certain, uh, a certain area. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of uh, notaries that are Albanians, Turks, etc. So this yeah. is also not an issue. And the notaries, uh, the notaries uh, chamber is really strong in Macedonia. Mm -hmm. uh, they're really powerful and consolidated, and they uh, they have fought for great competences. So now the notaries public have great competences i think greater than the rest of the the region <laughs> powerful lobby yes. <laughs> makes, yes, makes powerful a lot of lobby. <laughs> yeah i wish we had yes. the same thing with the lawyers and things of that nature i mean we're always left uh, on the side <laughs> yeah precisely here too <laughs> um yes. well i wouldn't really want to take much of your time i know it's friday and you came back from work it's 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 a long day um i wanted to make just one last question i mean not to lose the sight of what's happening right now with ukraine I mean, you recently, you wrote 
I mean, I, I had the chance to look at you, one of your academic publications. It was on the concept of the international responsibilities of state in the, in the eyes of international public law system. Uh, how, how would you judge the role, uh, the, the, the recent conflict? Like, could, could this perhaps alter the international law norms as we know it? Or um, could, the, the conf could this conflict uh, perhaps give new excuses to create potential turmoil in, in our weak sub-region in the Balkans? Or what are your thoughts on it as a public well, law the expert? International law will not be amended because of one <laughs> player, <laughs> uh, no matter how big it is. So uh -huh, the international uh -huh. law is the same. The way it is applied, <laughs> you it's know, it has always been different. different. For, yes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is uh, beyond tragic what happened. So I would just say this as a human, not as a lawyer or uh, political scientist. Mm -hmm. uh, this is beyond tragic. And my heart goes to Ukraine, especially to the civilians and the children. Uh, I hope it stays, uh, I, I hope it stays limited uh, mm -hmm. in territorial sense, uh, but not only in territorial sense, but also in terms of implications for the, for the broader uh, region, such as Europe and such as ourselves. This will not right. be without, uh, without uh, implications for the Balkans or for the EU integration process, mm -hmm. but it can go either way. It can be both good or bad for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure at this uh, from this point where it would go. Uh, anyhow, this is a transgression of the international law. We all know this. Mm -hmm. um, it is unprincipled and uh, I hope it resolves rather quickly mm -hmm. on a negotiating table, table between yeah. Russia and NATO. <laughs> yes, yes, Any, yes. Anyhow, I hope that, uh, that we will receive only moderate only moderate implications otherwise i'm it's not a, sure what our yeah. positions would be. What, what's going to yes. be the point of law anyways you know at that point yes yes all right um i would like to thank you for your time um you if you would like we can continue uh the conversation or if you're too busy and if you have your time i wanted to have it like a short not i know it's friday and i know it's almost five o'clock in the afternoon and uh, you might be busy and you might have your own life going. Um, so if you have any last thoughts and comments you'd like to share with us, any, any new projects you're working in as of late and how can, uh, let's say lawyers from the rest of the Balkans, let's say get involved because I see there are a lot of projects in Serbia, Albania, Macedonia that we can, we can get interconnected and sort of get things moving in a new level. So. Mm, yes. Well, uh, there are so many things to say about this topic. <laughs> but, uh, Whatever comes to mind, really. Law. This is an endless thing. And it is, as yeah, you yeah. Seen, we are just talking it's all touching, the time. Touching the eyes, yeah. <laughs> yes, but um, I would also like to keep this short. If you have uh, anything to add, uh, that would be nice. But I would like to stay in touch. And uh, I would just say that I would be really happy personally if we uh, if we network a little bit more, uh, if uh, these projects that are uh, get that are getting momentum uh, regarding the rule of law and the cooperation uh, between judiciaries and uh, scientists, uh, I appreciate more the scientific mm -hmm. yes, <laughs> uh, part, of course. But uh, but you know we have to get together both practitioners and uh, scientists because this is how the system improves. Mm -hmm, we're mm -hmm. a syllogism mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh i'm just hoping that that we would have some opportunity either uh as part of a project or as our initiative to to network and to, to no, do absolutely. something joint absolutely i mean i would be totally open for that and uh, because these are only they add value i mean i've always um uh, found fascination with these people who work in the in the legal sector but that in, are in the academia in the in the like in the field of research because those are very demanding uh, processes like it's one thing to represent clients in court but then it's another thing to do comparative law how how the law has changed in the last 10 years let's say or how the eu legislation has been implemented in x y country and how it can affect our own country right so it's a much more complicated process and just one more question into that like um 
what are some of the challenges like you as legal researcher can face? Like what, what are some things that can be improved in terms of um, as a, quality, as a well, as a quality uh, of the research? Of a political yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you yes, have like well, the best um, of both worlds. Yes. Like, uh, political um, scientists and, and legal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, well, uh, first, thank you for, again, for the invitation. Thank you for the kind words. <laughs> uh, the appreciation is mutual. Um, what are uh, some challenges? Of course, there, there is the issue of funding. There, there cannot be quality, quality research without funding. Without funding. Also, um, we have to invest continuously, not only in funding, but, but training, methodological training. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of methods that we're applying now have been used for decades and you know these greater uh, greater universities use advanced methods mm -hmm. so i'm not saying we cannot achieve quality by this we can we can analyze the system so we can get uh, impression on the system but if we want uh, if we want higher quality especially of comparative analysis we have to uh, have greater uh, insight into our neighbors and into uh, other systems uh, so that we can uh, use their experiences, we can exchange knowledge and experiences, mm -hmm. and this all costs money. So yes. I would say that, <laughs> that funding is probably the primary concern uh, in this area. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people are... are um, in the mood for cooperation so uh, i think and also i think there are a lot of people that are well educated especially abroad and they have come to our countries again you know at, at one previous point in time a lot of people stayed abroad and now a lot of people are uh, getting home so returning this is something again. That, that's very yes. that's positive in north macedonia but i think here it's it's quite the opposite i think people here it continues that same idea like you go back you go back like you don't come back here i mean it's 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 a very if it's, it's a very suffocating environment really I mean, but i've seen like in north macedonia like things are a lot more different people the young here the young there are much more hopeful of the life there at least for, from what Perhaps I've seen, not so much. <laughs> not so much, but I mean, in general, people are returning there. You know, like at, at least that's something. Yeah, unlike here, mm -hmm. like. But you're you're correct in that. Um, thank you very much for this, and uh, I really hope that um, we can continue. We can have forms of cooperation. I don't know research, whatever. If you have info, if you need information about Albanian law, or whatever, I can help you with that. Provide you information as necessary. I've been working as a with a legal research institute in Vienna, yes. and I've been involved with a particular project called the mm -hmm. Comprehensive Analysis on the Albanian uh, Waste Management System, uh, an overview of the entire mm, legislation. Uh, so um, I've got some firsthand experience as well in this uh, law legal research per se, and I think I, I I can learn a lot from you guys, right? From you, from Dushan, from from all the people in the region. So like if there are projects, initiatives, we can, I can work with, also, jump on board. Also we can learn from you. Are you uh, an expert in environmental law? Mm -hmm. uh, sort of environmental law, uh, natural resources, yes. um, things of that nature, like, because that's where we specialize as well. So, so I think that. This is great. <laughs> all right. This is great. Uh, we, we we don't really know each other in many regards. I mean, as professionals, and I think it's it's we can discover fascinating things about ourselves. Like, and yes. uh, thank you very much again. And yes, but primarily, I think that we're much more similar than uh, yes, we were expecting yeah, to I, find. I, I, yes, yes. Honestly, yes. honestly, that was the thing. Yeah, like we're so much similar, and um, I think many of the problem is because we don't know much one another, and this could very much help change the trajectory in some way yes all right thank yes. you yes actually i'm hoping to work on a on a project now it's in the phase of application but i'm really hoping that we will get this project about the the perception among macedonians and bulgarians because we haven't had the opportunity to collaborate uh, much with bulgarians uh -huh. uh, this is also an issue because we usually uh, collaborate with the ex Yugoslavian republics, you know, yes, Serbia, obviously. Croatia. This is kind of the, the go to mode. 
and uh, it it would be really good if we had more more colleagues from Bulgaria and Albania so that we can uh, really okay. cooperate regionally as it as we should. <laughs> well, uh, it was really nice to know more things about you. All right, thank you very much for your time, and I wish you a great great afternoon. Likewise, bye. Bye bye.